Hi, and welcome back to Webination Station. This is Jason, and you're watching the Get On Track, Stay On Track podcast, helping your small business one expert at a time. And today's expert is Michael Nelson. And Michael's going to help us answer the question, how do I define a business strategy? So, pretty big question. Uh, for those of you that don't know Michael, Michael's a small business coach, and he's a strategic digital marketing consultant to small and mid-sized businesses. Michael's also a pilot, he's a family man, he served on the staff of the Commandment of the U.S. Marine Corps, and he's been a strategy consultant to the White House. Interesting, we'll have to ask Michael about that. Michael, welcome Thanks, to the Jason. show. Thanks, Jason, great to be here. I'm delighted to be amongst the, uh, the guests that you've had. Uh, I've been watching for a while, and it's a great crew, so really happy to be here with you. Excellent. And it's going to be a big topic. I know uh, we've only got a half an hour, and so we can't possibly hope to cover this whole topic in this short of a time. So to our viewers, I say grab your pen, grab your pencil, and uh, start writing your notes. But that's the beauty of a podcast. We will have a replay. You can always go back and watch it again. You'll be able to watch it over on ontracktips.com. And if you want to right now, go ahead and below here, if you're in the events tab, make sure you start putting in your comments. Keep them short, keep them simple. We'll get to them at the end of the show. If you're over on Twitter, join us using the hashtag pound on track tips. And if you happen to be over on Facebook, look for Webination Station and you'll see us live over there. Make sure you make your comments. Okay, that's enough with the introduction. Let's dive right into it. Lots to cover. I think the best place, really, Michael, to start is, you know, let's let's say, why, why is it so important to even define a business strategy? And, that, and that's a great question. I think it's the, the foundation question, really, that needs to be answered in business. And from my perspective, your small business strategy is what gives you that little bit of small business zen. It's the peace of mind that comes with knowing that you can work in the present, be in the present, not fret about past mistakes or failures and not worry about the future because you've taken the time to lay out what your goals are and the path that you're going to follow to get to those goals. So really what it does is it gives you peace, clarity of mind, and it gives you and your organization focus. You know in any given moment the steps that you should be taking to move in the right direction. And the other thing that's really important for us small business owners and entrepreneurs is it helps you avoid shiny object syndrome where the latest thing comes along and you think well maybe I'll try that that might help my business but it lets you sort of focus back and evaluate everything in light of your goals and the plans that you have to reach them I was I was recently taking the Google Analytics course and one of the things that they taught us right away they said go ahead and define your business objective because if you don't know what your business objective is then there's no way that you can determine what it is that you're supposed to be monitoring or measuring I was right. consulting with a uh, indie author uh, and I asked them what's your business objective and they said well I want to make money selling books and I said to them well if your business objective is to make money then you would not have been an indie author your business objective is really something different than that. Michael, tell us, tell us a little bit more about, help us understand, what is business objective? So I look at strategy as starting with themes and goals. And what you're calling the objective is what I would probably call the theme, and it's that big notional out here, right? It might be a year down the road, three years down the road, five years down the road, but it's what do you want your business to be? And it might be, you know, to be the leading plumber in my community. It might be to be the you know, best marketing firm, you know, online in this region. You know, whatever it is, it's that big goal that you're not going to get to today or tomorrow, but you're going to work towards and strive towards. Um, so it's, it's kind of like your vision. You know, if you think of, I think it was Stanford University in the 1870s, said their vision was to be the Harvard of the West. You know, and something like that is perfect, right? Because that tells you, operationally every step of the way you're working towards this big hairy audacious goal and you know whether or not your steps are congruent to get you there so those themes then become how you create your individual goals and those you know help you start moving towards that theme what about target market how important is it that you understand your target market uh, if you want to stay in business it's critical I think uh, it's the foundation, really, of your marketing, um, knowing the problem that you solve, who you solve it for, and the circumstance that they find themselves in when they need your solution is really the key not only to your marketing, but really to achieving your business goals. Because unless you're a nonprofit and you have some other objective, revenue is a major part of any business goal. You know, whether it's you know, revenue to you know, grow and sell your business with an exit plan, 
or if you're an indie author and you need enough revenue to live at a certain lifestyle and love what you're doing and you don't need more than that, in either case, revenue is critical. And, and you need to have that component there to establish those goals and, and meet them. And, and so we're always hearing that early on, you know, the first thing you need to do, define your target market. But uh, would you say that this is a static process or a fluid? I mean, you're constantly reevaluating, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's dynamic, and as is strategy. I mean, a lot of people look at strategy as I take some time, I sit in a conference room with all the smart people I can find, and I put all my thoughts into a binder, and then it sits on the shelf and somehow magically helps my business work. And it's not. It's dynamic. You're continuously updating your strategy. You're continuously updating your market because you don't have perfect information. So when you're sitting in your business, whether it's in your home or in an uh, office, and you release a product or a service, you think you know what's going to happen. But until it encounters that market, you don't really know for sure. And so you might sell something that people use differently or that people in different circumstances that you expected benefit from it. Or it could be the other way, that you misread it and those people really don't want what you have. So you have to look at that and that helps you inform your marketing results, your marketing campaigns. And if you're not doing that right, then everything's just random and a shot in the dark. So we, need, we, we understand we have to create a strategy. We have to know who we are. We have to know who it is we're addressing. Now, we've, we've created those. We've defined those. We've sent some time in the think tank on that. So now what's the next step? I was watching one of your videos, and uh, you had a really excellent uh, video about the back of the napkin business model. Can, mm -hmm. you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, the thing I do after we talk about those strategic themes is then I want to understand what my business model is. And there's a robust business model you can use that I love called the business model canvas. But before you get there, I think it's important to do a little bit of back of the napkin math and creating your business model. And so when I work with people, you know, we ask them, what are your goals? And, and it's always sort of, you know, I want to make this much money a year. And then we say, well, how much do you sell your product or service for? How long does it take you to deliver that? And then we look at the math. So if you want to make 100000 and the things that you sell make you 1000 then you need to sell 100 And how long does it take you to deliver 100 How many do you have to get a week? It's really sort of breaking down your business into bite-sized chunks. And it's a real sanity check on whether or not your goals are realistic, which is a key component of setting your goals. We you use SMART goals, and, and realistic is one of those uh, acronym pieces. So well, that's, a, that's actually a really good segue. So let's jump then to that. So you said you've got your back of the napkin. And what did you call it? The canvas model? If you were to give us real quickly kind of an overview, bullet point, step A, B, C, D, E, or however many steps there are, can you just throw the bullet points at us and then we'll go back and we'll discuss them individually. What would you say steps one through five are for developing your business strategy? Okay. So I would say first and foremost, you look at those themes. What are the big level aspirations that you have for your business? And not just for your business, but it's important to consider you as the business owner. What do you want out of the business? Then from there, we decompose those into goals. What does it take to reach each of those themes? And then have a back of the napkin business model as a sanity check to see, is this really a path I should pursue or do I need to alter something? And then once you've done that, you can move down to the planning process. And when you get to planning, you make a plan. And here we're not talking about some big, you know, fat binder of information. Your plan could simply be a list of actions that you're going to take along with the dates and the resources required. Once you have that plan, you execute. You take actions that are in the plan. From those actions, you get results. And it's important that you watch those results. You measure those results so you know what impact your actions had relative towards reaching your goal. And these are real simple. They don't need to be complex at all. I'm a huge fan of simple, effective, and inexpensive for small business owners because we've got so much else to do. And that's a circle, a little iterative circle. You make your plan, you do steps, you find results, you look at it, you alter. And then every quarter maybe or so you go back and you look at your goals. How am I doing? Do I need to change my goals? Are they moving me towards my themes? And then, you know, obviously within the plan action results sequence, is your marketing and there's a little flow that goes with your marketing too and maybe I'll just do the 10 second version of that which is understand like I had mentioned before what problems you solve and those problems are helping your clients solve a pain point or reach a compelling desire that they have 
And then what circumstance do those people find themselves in when they need your solution? And those pieces will help you market, which helps you make your plan, take your actions, etc. And so it's a, a little loop there that's actually pretty easy to follow if you just you know take the time to write it down, say I did this, this was the result, don't want to do that next time, or I want to really do more of that because this worked well. And that in a nutshell is kind of the flow that I use with any business saying to look at where you want to go towards moving down that path and measuring your progress. Okay, so let's go through those um, piece by piece. Going back to goals, mm -hmm. um, the things that I've been watching your videos and reading your blog, which I encourage everybody to go over to the Conjun Coach and check it. There'll be a link in the description below. Uh, right. You you mentioned uh, terms like elevator pitch and sales funnel and CTA, which is call to action, and I think it's important that we just investigate that for a minute. Help us understand what how important is that elevator pitch, um, first of all. I think it's key, and, and elevator pitch is a bit of a misnomer. You know, having been created to to make a pitch to a, a venture cap or something in a short amount of time, but really what I'm getting at with that is your ability to shake someone's hand, and when they say, "What do you do?" not say, "I'm a plumber, I'm a writer," but rather to say, "You know, I help small business owners, you know, triple their revenue." And what you're doing there is you're saying who you help and what you help them do. And by doing that, the great thing is, is when you meet people, they will know right off the bat if you're someone that they should be interested in engaging with, and you'll know as well. So you don't have a 10-minute conversation with someone who has no interest in what you're doing if it's a business development environment. And so people will self-select away from you if they're not appropriate, which is great because that saves you time. And people that are interested will follow up that question or that statement that you make with, how do you do that? And that gives you the opportunity to start asking questions. You know, what's your situation? How do you find yourself? What are your challenges? And then you can start working through what you know about the problems you solve, who they're for, the circumstances, and you can work right into your flow that you've thought out and considered. And it's not random and shooting from the hip, but it's putting the pieces together, you know, with the person who's right in front of you in a way that makes it clear to both of you that it's appropriate for you to be having the conversation. Yeah, um, I was watching uh, one of your videos also, and you were talking about don't when you make this in initial introduction, don't tell them about oh I'm do this and I do that, but instead uh, benefits was the word that you used. And in fact, a very good friend of mine, Kenneth Nasi, who's one of my personal coaches, um, also always uses that. He says people don't buy uh, you, they buy your benefits. Or help me understand that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And that's the features benefits conundrum that many people fall on the wrong side of, right? So when you make a product, when you uh, create a service, you know every little thing about it. You know, it's just, uh, you know, if it's a Ferrari, you know that it's got these types of brakes, this much horsepower, you know, this type of cockpit. You know all those features. But what people buy are the benefits. And to stick with the Ferrari example. You might be trying to sell the speed, the braking, the lap time, the cornering, but someone who's buying it is probably looking at buying a physical sign that they've made it. They've been successful and they're showing it off to their friends. So you need to figure out what those benefits are because that's what you're going to sell. And an easy way to think about it is write down everything that describes your product and then next to it write so that. And then on the other side, tell what that does. You know, this uh, Ferrari does this, so that. And really what you get to with a Ferrari then is, you know, it's a great symbol so that your friends know that you've arrived. And that's really how you want to take your marketing. And you mentioned the I part, right? And, and I is very damaging in marketing, I think. So if I meet you and we start talking about what do you do, and I start going, I do this, I do that, me, 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 you end up in that classic, you know, fighter pilot thing. Uh, you know, which is how do you know there's a fighter pilot in the room? You know, he'll tell you. <laughs> right. You know, it's, uh, if it's it's all about me and not about you. How can you know? Where's the enticement for you to do business with me? Right. And I think that time to really look at the me, 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 and the I, I, I is when you're in that planning stage. When you're in your boardroom, you've got your people, and let's really get to the place where we can understand who am I? Who is me? And mm -hmm. then, and, and that's part of the business strategy. Now, I think what we're getting into a little bit here is the marketing angle. And before we get too far off on the marketing side, coming back to strategy, know mm -hmm. who you are, know who your clients are, set some realistic uh, vision or goals, 
uh, David Oldenburg uh, came on the show and he made a comment, and I'm going to share it with everyone real quickly. He said, uh, I like the napkin because so people have the, ab have the ability to create a realistic plan for success. I mean, they have an idea, but are unrealistic about how much money they can make doing it or how long it will take. And uh, yeah, David, that's a, a really great point there. Do you want to follow up that with anything, Michael? No, I think that's. I think we've uh, covered it, but I, I completely agree with that, and that goes back to what I said with the sort of the back of the business or back of the napkin business model. Is what you're doing achievable? Does it make sense? Can you reach it? You know, and really that you know, I can segue into the the smart goal, right? When you set your goal, I use the acronym SMART. You know, and I must be the the third three billionth person to do it. It's out there everywhere, and it's common sense, but so few of us use it that it's worth repeating. And that is when you set a goal for yourself, for your business, you want it to be specific, not general, measurable, otherwise you won't know if you've, you know, how far along the path you are there or if you've reached it, attainable, which means you don't want to set some pie in the sky thing as your goal. Remember, that's your vision. That's what you want to move towards aspirationally. You want it to be relevant. If you have a goal, it should flow towards your themes, your business goals, your ultimate goal. And then you want it to be time bound. You don't want it to be endless. So if you have a goal and it's it's you know something you do into infinity or beyond, it doesn't do you any good in reaching where your business wants to go. Mm -hmm. And those will all be in the show notes. I know uh, I know uh, listeners that we are throwing a lot a lot a lot of information out here, but that's why I'm going to encourage you make sure you go back to uh, Michael's blog at the Congent Coach and make sure you come over to uh, OnTrackTips.com because we're going to have all of these notes and we'll be able to develop and, and expand some of these discussions. Okay, let's now move into the planning phase. This for me and my clients always seems to be the hardest part. They just get overwhelmed. They they hear things. In fact, I just had a a, a client, uh, which is a good friend of mine, Jim Howard from Howard's Custom Guitars or HowardGuitars uh, dot com, and he he just got overwhelmed. He had a company that said it's going to be seven thousand dollars to fix your website, and they started throwing terms like SMO and SEO and 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 optimize and things. And he said, Jason, my head exploded. I didn't understand right. what all these terms were. He said, so what, what, what I need to know is what can I do? What, what should be my plan? Should I worry about my website? Should I worry about my search engine, my social media? He said, I'm a newbie. I have no idea where to even start with this stuff. So the idea of making a plan, he would have nowhere. I mean, I don't know where to start. What, what do you say to a, a guy like Jim? I sh I'm sure you meet him all the time. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's interesting that you talked about the, the web developers talking about SEO and SMO and things like that. And really what they're talking about is me and features. Right? It didn't help him understand how it would help his business. Yeah. You know, and, and so I think that was an interesting point. But where I would start, and I think when you talk about planning, the, the challenge that a lot of people face is that they start planning before they've done all the other foundational pieces that should have happened, before they've examined where they want to go overall with their business before they've then decomposed that down into, say, three goals. You don't want a lot. You just want it simple. What are a couple of goals that will help you reach those themes? And are they smart goals? Have you done that? Then, when you make your plan, you're just answering the question, how do I reach those goals? Now you're not trying to solve world hunger. You're creating a plan, and this plan can be nothing more than a list of action items. It can be that simple. It's just something to orient your mind and focus you if you're a solopreneur or your company. You share this with them. Here's the goals we're going to reach, and then here are the steps that we're going to do to reach that. And along with each step, it should be done by this time. You know, use the SMART acronym for each goal. Spell it out. You make that list, and then just check things off as you go and measure them. And if you don't know how often to measure them, do it once a month. Come back to your list of action items in your plan once a month and say, did we do it? If we did, what was the result? Was it what we expected? Was it better or worse? What can we do differently next time? And you adjust it then. And then quarterly, you go back and you look at how am I doing towards my goals? And if you do it that way, you break it down to bite-sized chunks. You make it simple. Because remember, we don't have tons of time. You know, there's a common joke about entrepreneurs, right? We work whenever we want. We just pick our favorite hour, you know, 90 hours of the week to work. <laughs> and so we don't have time to say, oh, this is a fantastic you know, strategic planning process in a box and it's only going to take me 20 hours a week to do. Well, that's 20 hours a week that you don't earn revenue, 
that you're not spending with your family, that you're not doing the things you love. So when you do the strategy and when you, you take these steps, they need to be simple enough to drive revenue, to move you towards your goals, and give you time back because you're doing everything more efficiently. So if you have a strategic planning process and you've put together a plan and you're executing it, instead of 90 hours a week to get X results, you should be working 60 hours a week to get twice those results. And that's the power of the strategy as it organizes and orients your business towards your goals. So let's, 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 okay, you are doing an amazing job of just keeping this simple and easy to digest. And I, and I know because we've got people commenting all over the place how much information we're giving them, and, and this is great. But let's try to even bring it down even one step further. Let's really right. oversimplify this. And let's use the example of my friend Jim. So Jim, he creates fine custom guitars in his workshop. He's got very limited funds. He has very little knowledge of the internet. He's intimidated by social media. What might be three goals for Jim? Well, first I would step back and say, where does Jim want to go with his business? And then I would look at those goals. And his goals might be based on revenue or they might be based on units. You know, if he's a fine craftsman making guitars, he may have a finite amount that he can build during a year. So I would start with how many hours a week do you want to work, Jim? And if the answer is 40, then say, okay, how many guitars can I build if I work 40 hours a week, but actually only build guitars for 30? And figure that out first. And then when you come to that number, let's just say 100, because I'm good with math that's ones and zeros. If he can make 100 guitars and sell them for $1,000 a piece, he's made a hundred thousand dollars. Now what does it take around him administratively to do that? So then he might have I have to have the rest of my business in place. If he has employees there might be HR, there might be payroll, there's those other little things that eat up our time as business people and then he's going to have the marketing. I have to make this many guitars, I think I can sell them for this, I've got my business under control, now let's look at marketing. What do I need to do to marketing? You say he doesn't know social media, the internet, then he's got a couple of choices. He can go, you know, where do they sell best historically? Is it person to person? Is it through someone else's music store? You know, where are the channels that he uses to sell his guitars to his customers? And I would look at that first. And if he can sell everything without social media and without the internet, and he's happy with those income targets, then he should completely ignore digital marketing because it's just a money siphon for him in that case. But if he's not selling enough, if he can overproduce and undersell, and he needs to sell it, then he has to look at some different options. You know, would it be Facebook groups, Google groups, where he starts to just log on, engage in conversations, build up followings, have a simple website. You know, every website developer, and you and I probably know this from experience, would like to sell big complex websites that are perfect for mid-sized businesses. Not so good for a solopreneur. You know, we can get along with a WordPress site that delivers value. He can have a WordPress site with a link to him, to his store, with some pictures to things, with PayPal set up on it. And that is truly one that your neighbor's kid or your nephew can do for a couple hundred bucks. You can go to Elance, you can go to Fiverr, you can outsource those things very inexpensively and he can get a presence there. So there's a couple of different ways that I would approach that. And, and I would start with where do you want to go, Jim? You know, is it, you know, you just want to meet, you know, make your ends meet and, and work your craft? Do you want to put kids through college and you need more? You know, those are the places to start for me. And then breaking those things down into how can I make that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, what, what I told him, uh, and and so, so that others can hear because I, I also uh, work with a lot of indie authors and small business and solopreneurs and so for Jim uh, and anybody else listening who might be like Jim what I told him specifically was uh, Facebook is not the answer for you it wasn't going to work for you I suggested Twitter because uh, I think it's a phenomenal search engine that he can go in and he can really target people that are, 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 are his ideal client. He's not looking for consumers of music. He's looking for producers of music and not just any producer. He's looking for the upper echelon. He's looking for an elite crowd that is going to buy a custom-built guitar that runs for about $2,500. Mm -hmm. These are amazing. That's an amazing handcrafted instrument. Also, I recommended Google Plus Communities. I think that that would be a phenomenal 
place where he could go in, but the main point is is that he's not going to do this overnight. Social media is a long haul. You need to make engagement. You don't walk in the room and just start blasting, hey, I've got a guitar. Look at my guitar. Look at my guitar. Instead, walk in the room, wear the guitar, start talking to somebody about guitars, and they'll introduce you to their friend and say, hey, look at Jim's guitar. That's how we want it. Would you agree, Michael? Oh, you know what I love about what you said, Jason, was that you brought up the influencers idea. And, and you know, so you've got musicians that can afford a really nice instrument. And those people are connected in that world. And if he can get a few of those musicians using his guitar, what if he could get them to do a little hangout with him where they played a song? You know, here's my guitar, you can hear it, here's this person. You know, and what if you know that person then loves the guitar, and Jim says, "Hey, can you spread the word about my guitars a little bit? Can you tell people where you got it?" And he starts, you know, again over time because social media is not overnight. He starts building that network of people who know him through these musicians, and Twitter is fantastic for that. And I think Google Plus would work the same. But really, then you're starting to say, "Well, here's where I am." here's where I want to go and in between us these influencers can help move me along that path because they like what I've done and they're willing to, to talk about it. Yeah and that's why I said I think YouTube would be an excellent medium for Jim as well. Now this recipe that I just threw out there is specific to Jim and I think that's why it's important anybody on the call if you if you have these kinds of questions and you don't know where to start call Michael call myself Find yourself a business coach that can help you get this strategy put together. Don't look for somebody that's going to come out and say, hey, I want to build your website. You don't want that. You don't need that. What you need is somebody that understands from point A to point Z and is willing to look at you and ask you first, what is your goals? What do you want to accomplish? And if somebody tries to tell you what you need to do without asking you what your goals are, you're in the wrong place. Mike, uh, we've only got three more minutes. I want to take uh, a couple questions, and as I'm taking these, I want you to be thinking about something you want to share with us. Um, so I'm just going to run down the list here and show uh, feature some of our viewers. Jason Darrell, he says, oh, I've got several of those folders, Michael. And that, that, that comment came out early on when he was talking about the uh, goals and the strategies uh, early on in the, in the discussion. Susan Evans got a really good question here. And uh, again, we've only got a minute to answer this, so we're going to do a speed round here. How do you get frugal audiences to buy, Michael? By showing that what you're delivering to them is worth more than what they're paying. If you can show someone that's frugal a hundred dollar value that you're selling for twenty bucks, you're going to make inroads with them because that matches exactly how their buying preferences are. But again, you have to over deliver and don't be chintzy with sharing information like we're doing with Jason. I am giving you everything I can think of. I'm holding nothing back. Do that with your clients. I don't know if they're buying products or services, but over deliver. Make your customer service a real focal point with those folks so that you start to build a relationship with them. If you can get a frugal person tooting your horn, I mean, you've really got something going because their friends will know that they're frugal too and their recommendation will carry <laughs> a lot of weight with you, with their friends. That's really good. And uh, Jason Darrell again. Th Jason, thanks a lot for asking comments. And everybody, ask comments. We want your discussion. We want you to participate. Jason, again, so echoes. Sell the benefits, not the features. I love it. And yeah, and, and you know, it's a big topic. It's not something that we could easily cover. We could de dedicate an entire uh, discussion to it. So uh, if you're if you want to understand this concept a little bit more, make sure you go over and and find Michael or or myself or some other coach that can help you understand really what this means. Uh, Michael, what uh, what do you want? What are you working on? What do you want to share us? Where do you want to drive some traffic? Sure. Um, first of all, I think under my uh, picture should be my website. That's my blog. The uh, the blog's purpose is to share information like we're doing on this show to help small business owners. Uh, and I call it Small Business Zen, and I talked a little bit about that at the beginning. It's to give you that peace of mind that you know what you're working on is moving you towards your goals, and you'll find stuff on strategy, marketing, specific aspects of marketing, how to build things specifically, different uh, platforms, and then things that I found that I think would be great for people to know. Uh, so that's, you know, come and visit us there. Uh, we have another business um, which focuses strictly on digital marketing at centripetalnetwork.com. So come and visit us there too, uh, but send me an email, you know. And if you'd like to work for me, and you and you mention you found me through Jason's show, uh, you know, I'll knock five hundred dollars a month off of any coaching that we agree to if it's right for us to work together. And make sure that if you're working with a coach, you meet with them and you make sure it's right for both of you. Get that right feel. It's really important. 
And on the digital marketing side, I'll throw the same offer out there because it keeps it easy in my head. If you're interested in having a lead generation engine built for you, a digital marketing system, come and visit us there and we can talk about that and, and what we can set up for you. Wow, thanks a lot, Michael. That's really excellent. That's a lot of value for our readers, and I appreciate that. Um, so uh, we're we're at that's it. We're at the end of the show, and we had a great one. I know um, if you want to hear more, make sure that you come on over to ontracktips.com. That's www.ontracktips.com, where we have all of our show notes, our podcast, and the live audio of this replay and the live video, so you can watch it there. We're going to have other great guests coming on the On Track, Get On Track, Stay On Track podcast, uh, guests like Peg Fitzpatrick. We're going to have Ronnie Bincer. We're going to have Mark Trapagan come in and talk about SEO. So make sure if you want to be a part of and not miss an episode, circle me on Google+, Plus. send me a message, say, add me to the podcast list, and make sure that you circle Michael Nelson. That's where I found you, was over on Google+. Plus. He's highly engaged over there, a great person to get to know. This is the Get On Track, Stay on track podcast helping you get your business on track one expert at a time and we're saying goodbye to our expert and thank you so much Michael Nelson we'll see you around My pleasure Jason thank you <laughs>